The Eldrazi are not of this world. They come from the blind eternities, or the spaces that exist between planes and have neither physical form or a color alignment. We have seen their manifestations across planes such as Zendikar, where they ravaged the plane nearly beyond repair, and Innistrad, where Emrakul was lured to warp the plane to her own twisted image. These forms we see of these beings are comparable to dipping the tip of your finger into a glass of water. What we see is only a small part of the greater entity. Eldrazi are unrelenting and powerful, bringing Lovecraftian horrors to the magic multiverse. So naturally, they'll be the central theme of our commander deck. Leading our force is none other than Mazarek, an insect death priest from the Golgari Sworn on Ravnica, a plane that is yet to be touched by the brain rot that is Eldrazi. At the head of our hordes of Eldrazi, Mazarek will allow us to harness eldritch power far beyond our comprehension. Mazarek Crawl Death Priest is a 2-2 insect shaman with flying, for 3 mana of any color and then 1 each of black and green. He has a triggered ability, where whenever a player sacrifices another permanent, you put a plus one plus one counter onto each creature you control. This ability can get out of hand quickly given the sheer amount of sacrifice we can put forward. See, the Eldrazi come with a very specific pair of creature tokens that will be the main focus of our deck, Eldrazi Scions and Eldrazi Spawns. Eldrazi Scions are 1-1 colorless creatures, and Eldrazi Spawns are 0-1 colorless creatures. Both have the activated ability where they can sacrifice themselves to add 1 colorless mana. This ability plays out quite nicely with Mazarek, as he will put plus one plus one counters onto our entire board whenever you sacrifice one of these creatures, and their self-sacrifice can also serve as mana ramp. Their ability is not impacted by summoning sickness, and so these tokens can be sacrificed on the turn that they're created. So of course, we do have a number of powerful cards that can abuse this engine. Perhaps the most powerful card in this deck is the Basking Brood Scale. This is a 2-2 Eldrazi Lizard for 2 mana. The relevant text on this card is its triggered ability, where whenever a quantity of plus one plus one counters are put onto the brute scale, you create a 0-1 colorless Eldrazi spawn creature token. We can then sacrifice those spawn tokens immediately for their colorless mana, which will then trigger Mazurik while he's in play. He puts a plus one plus one counter onto all of your creatures, which includes the brute scale, which repeats the process, creating you another Eldrazi token that you can sacrifice. All the while, this is putting more plus one plus one counters onto all of your creatures, making them larger and more dangerous. Evolution Witness, while not itself an Eldrazi, but an Elf Shaman Mutant, has a similar ability to the Brood Scale, but instead of creating us tokens, it will instead return a target permanent card from our graveyard to our hand. With this in play, we can easily recycle the cards that we've sacrificed for reuse. I opted for this as a more on-theme choice over something like the traditional Eternal Witness for repeated graveyard recursion. Crystalline Crawler is ironically based on the Hedrons that were scattered across Zendikar as a means to seal off the Eldrazi, but takes full advantage of what this deck wants to do. See, it costs 4 mana, and it has Converge, where it enters with a plus one plus one counter on it for each different color of mana used to cast it. You can remove a plus one plus one counter from it to add 1 mana of any color. You can also tap it to put a plus one plus one counter on it. In this deck, at most, it can come out with two plus one plus one counters on it, but using Mazarek's ability, we can use those plus one plus one counters put onto the crawler to add more colored mana. Combine this with the Basking Brute Scale engine, and we can generate as much colored mana as we'd like to run parallel to the colorless mana produced by the Eldrazi spawn tokens. Pride Malkin is a powerful endgame enabler, giving any creatures we control with the plus one plus one counter on them trample. See, one of the shortcomings of our deck is our ability to push damage through. All of the power in the multiverse falls short if we're getting chump blocked by another goblin token. With this cat, we're giving our creatures trample to ensure that that damage is getting through. Along those same lines, Rishkar Pima Renegade gives our creatures with counters on them the ability to tap for a green mana. Another way to utilize those plus one plus one counters is as removal fodder. Retribution of the Ancients is a card that I have found great success with. This one mana enchantment has an ability that costs one black mana, and it requires you to remove X plus one plus one counters from among creatures we control. Target creature will get minus X minus X until end of turn. This can be backbreaking in this deck, and can be a cornerstone in our removal package. One black mana, and a few plus one plus one counters removed to kill any creature is great efficiency. Our deck has the potential to put out hundreds of plus one plus one counters. Removing a few from a few of our creatures for the sake of killing an opponent's creature can be a very quick way of dealing with problem blockers. 
This also gets around indestructible, making it a great removal option. Now, because our deck is dumping plus one plus one counters onto our board state, Iridescent Horn Beetle is a phenomenal include. At the beginning of our end step, we will create a 1-1 green insect creature token for each plus one plus one counter that we've put onto creatures this turn. This counts every single plus one plus one counter that we put on all of our creatures, and it converts those into individual tokens. Meaning if we've gone through enough of the sacrifice and have put a few counters onto several creatures, that math is going to add up quickly to a very large board state. This is where our next section will be going token production. We have some sack outlets we'll be getting to momentarily, but I prefer using creature tokens as sack fodder to preserve our non-token creatures and the value that they bring. These cards will give us tokens to use as we need. Emrakul's Evangel is a bit of a tricky card to use properly, but the value it brings is very solid. You can tap this creature, then sacrifice it and any number of other non-Eldrazi creatures to create a 3-2 colorless Eldrazi horror creature token for each creature sacrificed this way. We can't sacrifice our Eldrazi creatures or use our Eldrazi tokens, but our deck makes enough tokens otherwise that we can convert smaller 1-1 creatures into 3-2 Eldrazi horror tokens that are far more intimidating. Marionette Apprentice has a Fabricate 1, giving us the option upon it entering to give itself either a plus one plus one counter or come in with a 1-1 colorless servo artifact creature token. Lastly, the Apprentice has a Blood Artist style ability that will drain each opponent for one damage whenever another creature or artifact we control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield. As a quick rulings note, tokens do technically hit the graveyard before they cease to exist, and so our Eldrazi Scions and Spawns will trigger this card. Ophiomancer is an oldie but a goodie token generator. At the beginning of each upkeep, if we control no snakes, we create a 1-1 black snake creature token with death touch. Now, usually creature tokens don't have a lot of combat viability since they are 1-1 creatures. The snakes our Ophiomancer creates have Death Touch, making them incredible blockers. They could trade with just about any opponent attacker, and then on the following player's turn, you create a new snake to replace the fallen one. We should, in theory, always begin our turn with a snake token under our control. Pitiless Plunderer is in here as well, giving us treasure tokens whenever a creature we control dies. Because Mazarek only cares about permanent being sacrificed, we will actually get plus one plus one counters off of those treasure tokens being sacrificed, giving us even more ramp. Priest of Forgotten Gods is a two mana human cleric with one activated ability requiring a tap and a sacrifice of two other creatures. Any number of target players each lose two life and sacrifice a creature, and then we add two black mana and draw a card. Getting to draw a card and ramp while forcing edict effects onto our opponents can be a dramatic swing in resources, especially given what our deck does when it sees creatures being sacrificed. Smothering Abomination is a 4-drop Eldrazi with flying. At the beginning of our upkeep, we do have to sacrifice a creature. Whenever we sacrifice a creature, we draw a card. This card is great value and my personal pick over something like Phyrexian Arena. We get a 4-3 with evasion that will only grow larger as Mazarek hands out counters, and we get card draw whenever we sacrifice a creature, which should translate into plenty of card draw. Ulamog's Dread Sire is a 10-10 for 10 mana with Vigilance and a ward cost requiring a sacrifice of a permanent with mana value 1 or greater. We can tap the Dread Sire to create a 10-10 Eldrazi creature token. This card is a lot of fun. An opponent has to sacrifice a permanent that costs 1 or more mana, which does mean that the bulk of tokens are off the table. Some tokens, like Tarmogoyf tokens, or tokens that are copies of non-token creatures, may have a mana value, allowing their usage in this application. This also means that the creature will largely be free to do as we please without much fear for interaction. A great way to use this card to the best of our ability is to attack with it on our turn since it has Vigilance and will not tap when attacking. Then, upon reaching the end of our opponent's turn, just before our turn begins, we then tap it to create that 10-10 Eldrazi token. We then begin our turn by untapping the Dreadsire and rocking out with a giant Eldrazi token unaffected by summoning sickness. Collector's Vault is in here as it is a bit of a pet card of mine, and it allows us for some card draw. We get to draw a card, discard a card, and create a treasure token. Sometimes, we will encounter board states where we have nothing to sacrifice to get the ball rolling. This allows us to jumpstart some game development, giving us a token that we're able to sacrifice for mana and proceed. 
Twitching Doll is a fun little include here. This 2 mana 2-2 two -two can tap to add 1 mana of any color, and then you put a nest counter onto the Twitching Doll. Then you can tap and sacrifice the doll, and create a 2-2 two -two green spider creature token with reach for each nest counter on the Twitching Doll. You're restricted to only sorcery speed for this ability, but that still can net us a ton of spiders once we no longer need the mana off of the doll. Idol of False Gods is a 2 mana kindred artifact with the Eldrazi creature type. You can pay 1 and 1 colorless mana to create a 0-1 colorless Eldrazi spawn token. Whenever another Eldrazi you control dies, you can put a plus and plus 1 counter onto the idol. Finally, as long as the idol has 8 or more plus and plus 1 counters on it, it becomes a 0-0 creature in addition to its other types, and it has Annihilator 2. Lots to unpack with this card. First, we get that basic token generation thing going, which I love. Secondly, and most importantly, it puts plus and plus 1 counters onto itself whenever our Eldrazi die. Something to note about this ability, that we are only able to put the plus and plus 1 counters on it using Mazarek's ability once the conditions have been met in the third ability that make it into a creature. While the idol does not have 8 or more plus and plus 1 counters on it, it is not a creature, and we can only get counters put on it through its own procedure. That being said, once it hits 8, it becomes a 0-0 Eldrazi creature, where the plus and plus 1 counters will then bump it up to be an 8-8. A brief explanation of the Annihilator mechanic for those new to this keyword. Annihilator is a mechanic unique to the Eldrazi creatures, and is an attack trigger that carries with it a numeric value. For this card, we have Annihilator 2. When a creature with Annihilator attacks, before blockers can be declared, the defending player must sacrifice a number of permanents equal to the numeric value of the Annihilator. So for this card, they must sacrifice two permanents before they can declare blockers. If multiple Annihilator abilities trigger, each requires separate sacrifices. This makes Annihilator one of the more cruel abilities, but it is so central to the Eldrazi creature type and, quite frankly, this deck's core strategy. Those sacrifices will trigger Mazarek. Even if an opponent has to sacrifice lands in order to resolve the Annihilator trigger, we will still get plus and plus one counters onto our board, making our attack that much more devastating. Finally, we have From Beyond, a 4 mana enchantment that gives us a 1 1 Eldrazi Scion at the beginning of our upkeep. We can also pay 2 and sacrifice From Beyond to tutor for any Eldrazi card. And on that note, let's talk about our Eldrazi. As I built this deck, I focused more on the lower end of our curve, which does technically deviate from the traditional Eldrazi decks that have a very heavy top end. Eldrazi are very large creatures and oftentimes carry very high mana values, some reaching into double digits. With that being said, we do have some notable includes that I think bring a good amount to the table. Artisan of Kozilek is a reanimator powerhouse and is a nine mana 10-9 with Annihilator 2. When you cast the Artisan, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Despite this being a very sacrifice heavy deck, I didn't include a lot of reanimation since we are looking to use our tokens as the sack fodder as often as possible. This offers us a very powerful means to get anything from our graveyard back to the battlefield. Decimator of the Provinces is a 7-7 for 10 mana with both Trample and Haste. It also has Emerge for 9 mana, which is its alternate casting cost. To do this, you may sacrifice a creature and pay the Emerge cost reduced by the mana cost of the sacrificed creature. When you cast the Decimator, creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2 and gain Trample until the end of turn. This is our deck's Creator Hoof Behemoth and is so very much on theme. We have the sacrifice potential, and we have an overrun ability, and we get a giant Eldrazi boar to overwhelm our opponents. It That Betrays is an 11-11 for 12 mana with Annihilator 2. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-land permanent, you may put that card onto the battlefield under your control. This card is brutal to have in play as you begin to close out games. We have several Annihilator triggers in this deck, and while this is in play, every card that your opponent sacrifices we steal. Even cards sacrificed for non-Eldrazi purposes, such as Fetchlands, will come back and serve us. Pathraiser of Ulamog is a 9-9 for 11 mana with Annihilator 3. It can't be blocked except by 3 or more creatures. This card doesn't just have Menace, it has Ultra Menace, and given that it has Annihilator 3, there is a very strong possibility this card simply becomes unblockable should your opponent have 2 or fewer creatures to block this thing with. 
Spawn Bed Protector is a 7 mana 6 8 that has an end step trigger, returning up to one target Eldrazi card from your graveyard to your hand. You then create two Eldrazi Scions. This is again more graveyard recursion, and while it doesn't have much else to offer, our Eldrazi will be the target for removal, and this ensures that we have multiple routes to get them back. Now, this is the most powerful card in this deck. Ulamog the Defiler is our deck's only Eldrazi Titan. When you cast this spell, target opponent exiles the top half of their library rounded up. It also has a ward cost requiring the sacrifice of two permanents. Ulamog also enters with a number of plus and plus one counters on it equal to the greatest mana value among cards in exile. Finally, Ulamog has Annihilator X, where X is the number of plus and plus one counters on it. This thing is game ending, and it will serve as our most backbreaking of win conditions. I don't super care about the cash trigger, though it will let Ulamog enter with the number of plus and plus one counters on it. The part of this card that I care about is its interaction with Mazarek. The Annihilator value is determined by how many plus and plus one counters are on Ulamog, and so if Mazarek is adding more of those counters, the Annihilator ability will scale. It is entirely possible to have such a tremendous amount of plus and plus one counters on Ulamog that his attack trigger forces the defending player to sacrifice their entire board state, lands included. If Mazarek is in play, the sack triggers will make your board state impossibly huge and will likely end the game right there. This one interaction was the inspiration for this entire deck, and while it can be seen as a very brutal way to win games, I think the amount of investment of mana and resources balancing out at least a little bit. It also feels very much on flavor for the Eldrazi being world ending calamities and all that. This deck wants to play the early game by getting a token producer out ASAP and then using those tokens as easy sack fodder for some of our other cards to get the ball rolling. Once we get Mazarek in play, we can begin bulking up our battlefield, and because our creatures can easily become much larger than anything else in play, we can simply turn our cards sideways and crush our opponents. We don't always have to rely on getting out Ulamog or any of our big Eldrazi creatures, but they do offer us a very solid route to victory should we begin to plateau with our deck's main strategy. For this deck, I did push for more on-theme cards that would contribute more to the deck's strategy than simply including certain staples. But for now, that will wrap up our look at Mazarek Kral Death Priest. What do you think of this deck? Mazarek always interested me as a Golgari legend, with the combination of plus and plus counters and sacrifice, and I think that incorporating the Eldrazi creatures in this way make for a very unique approach to the deck. Eldrazi have been a very popular creature type, and while I haven't really explored them all that much since Modern Horizons 3 added more to them, I think this would be my preferred playstyle. But what do you think? Are there some spicy tech cards that you would include? Let us know. I'll leave a link to the Moxfield page in the description of this video. If you enjoyed this video, likes and shares are among the best ways to support this channel. If you're new, subscribe so you never miss a beat. As always, I appreciate you spending time with me today, friends. So thank you all, and I'll see you all next time.